a system exchanges energy with a so-called bath that itself consists of many parts this is a little system in a big world in what kinds of states do we expect to find the system states characterized by relatively large system energy or instead states characterized by relatively small system energy there are many ways to transfer a quantity of energy from the system to the bath because there are many parts of the bath where energy can be placed intuitively one might expect energy to spend time distributed mostly among the parts of the bath only occasionally allocated to the system at this level of incomplete and informal discussion the system is more likely to be found in a low energy state than in a high energy state and so its physical properties are likely to be characterized by the properties of lower energy states. By considering whether energy is more likely to be found allocated to the system or instead to the bath, we can determine the average energy along with other properties of the system. In this slide deck, we develop this idea in a slightly more formal way. This slide deck is divided into four video modules. First, we state the hypothesis that all accessible microstates are explored equally. Second, we introduce some notation to keep our discussion tidy. Third, we determine how the number of ways to arrange a world consisting of a system and bath varies as energy is transferred from the system to the bath. And finally, we express the results of this analysis in the form of expressions that can be used to calculate the properties of a system connected to a bath. In these videos, we will remain agnostic to the details of particular microscopic systems. To some degree, we will also avoid detailed discussion of the formalisms used to express system dynamics. We will try to say little more than to state that dynamical systems are often described using differential equations and a portion of those equations that machinery is called the Hamiltonian. Whether discussing classical mechanics or quantum mechanics, one can say that the Hamiltonian describes the time evolution of a system in a state. The Hamiltonian can be considered apart from the differential equations where it describes the time evolution of a system, and it can be applied to a particular system state to spit out a number. That number is called the energy of that state. For simplicity, consider a cartoon system in state A with energy squiggly E0. Placing the system in a different state, for example state B, could change its energy, in this case to a new value, 2 squiggly E0. Other states and energies are possible, and some states share the same energy value. The energy levels need not be uniformly spaced, but we will consider such a situation to simplify the following discussion. This is an example of the state of a world with two pieces. The piece on the left is called the system, and the piece on the right is called part one, for reasons that will be clear later on. Compensatory losses and gains of energy in the system and part one would leave the total energy of the world unchanged. A change from one state of part one to another state with the same energy also leaves the overall energy of the world unchanged. In contrast, an increase in the energy of part 1, in the absence of a compensatory loss of energy from the system, produces a configuration with more total energy than associated with any of the other three configurations illustrated. If the Hamiltonian of the world is time-independent, then the overall energy of the world remains constant through time. Unless otherwise noted in these four videos, we will from now on refer to a world with a time-independent Hamiltonian whenever we say world. Starting from the configuration at the top left, the dynamics of the world explore other configurations with the same total energy. Two such configurations are illustrated explicitly. Configurations with different total energy like the one labeled at the bottom right are not accessed. In the Hamiltonian of the world that, again, we are not explicitly presenting, there is a portion that can be used to enumerate the states and energies available to the system. There is another portion that can be used to enumerate the states and energies available to the piece called Part 1, and yet another portion that allows for energy exchange between the system and Part 1. In many situations of interest, this third portion, the portion responsible for the so-called interaction between the system and Part 1, is considered weak. 
there's just enough of it to get some energy exchange going between the system and part one. The interaction is not so strong as to make irrelevant the spectra of states that we ascribe to the system and part one using their individual portions of the Hamiltonian of the world. In this animation, the red rectangle appears to spend the same amount of time highlighting the configuration at the top left as it spends highlighting any other configuration it accesses. This graphical choice is not an accident. There is an idea that, given enough overall time, all accessible configurations of the world are, in fact, explored with equal time. It is customary to label this idea a hypothesis or to call it the fundamental postulate of statistical mechanics. The fundamental postulate of statistical mechanics states that, given enough time, an isolated world explores all accessible microstates equally. The viewer may wish to consult Wikipedia for references describing how this so-called postulate can be derived for different kinds of dynamical systems. We have just stated that the accessible configurations of a world are equally accessed. This idea will allow us to determine the properties of a system connected to a bath. We will analyze how the number of configurations of the world depends on the distribution of energy between the system and the bath. In order to present our discussion compactly, we first need to introduce some notation.